Welcome back to CS201 Walkthroughs. My name is Lukash, and today I want to talk about the vocabulary that we use to code in Racket, or some of the syntax, some of the data types, you know, what, a, what a function is, what a basic if statement will do. I'm just going to run through these basically. A lot more information, more information than you'll ever need or use, is in the Racket Guide online in the documentation. Really easy to find online if you want to learn more about any of these data types or get confused. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to read, but um, but all the information is there for sure. They have examples as well, so I can click on something like numbers and they'll explain what a number is. Here are some examples of how to use division with numbers and things of that sort. So functions in Racket, first thing I want to say about them is that they are parentheses, parentheses and closed when called. So whenever I call a function, I'll give you an example of a function. Define is a function. Whenever I call the define function, I'm going to enclose it and its arguments in parentheses. So parentheses enclosed when called, I'll say function name and its arguments are parentheses enclosed when called. So define is a function that takes two arguments. Remember, define is the function that we use to, to make another function. So here, if I want to make the function function1, I'll say, well, this is the first argument of define, right? because remember, this is our define statement. The function comes after the first parenthesis, and then this last one closes its arguments. We're going to have another thing that goes in here. But our first argument to define is the name of the function. So first argument is name of function to be defined. The second argument is the output of the function defined. So here's my name, my function name. Oh, I should mention that the name of the function to be defined is in parens. So here's my function. The name is function one in parentheses. The output is going to be five. So now when I click run, all I have to do is call function 1, and it will return 5. OK, pretty simple function. Another important point is that functions can have inputs. So if I have, they can be named whatever you want. Here I'm defining a function. This is not just the function name, this first argument. It's the function name and the inputs to that function. So I should, I should fix this. I should say the first argument is the name of the function to be defined in parentheses, name of the function to be defined, and its inputs, and the name of its inputs in parentheses. So you can have as many inputs here as you want, right? Input 2, input 3, doesn't matter. This function will just output input 1. So if I try to give it the wrong number of inputs, oh, I'm redefining function 1 so it's not happy. Let me fix that, call it function 2. Now when I call function 2, I have to pass it the right number of inputs. If I only pass it one thing, it'll complain and it'll say, arity mismatch. The number of expected arguments does not match the given number. So it expected 1, 2, 3. I only gave it, give it 1. So let me try, try again, calling it correctly with inputs 1, 2, and 3. Uh, let's just make them 4, 5, and 6, the numbers. And then it'll return 4, because that's matched to input 1. Okay, cool. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is booleans. Booleans are true or false values. The way they're written in Racket is pound t or pound false. I don't think there's anything else. Nothing else counts as a boolean. Not true or t or true, or anything like that. Another important point, important note about data types, is that they have functions to check uh, if, the, uh, if, if a given is of a certain data type. That was a little bit confusing. They have functions to check if a given input is of a certain data type. So what I mean by that is I can ask something like boolean 
pound t. So here I'm asking, what is the data type of this input, pound t? Is it a Boolean? And then I'll get out from that a true or a false. In this case, it's true because pound t is a Boolean. If we wanted to check, hey, is true a Boolean? Does this count as a Boolean in Racket? We could run something like Boolean true. Well, no, it doesn't. In fact, it's undefined because I haven't said what true is, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So these functions, this Boolean question mark, there's also a number question mark, a character, a uh, char question mark, string question mark, symbol question mark. Uh, we'll get to those later. Numbers in Racket are, are basically what you'd expect. There's you know, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we'll call those integers. We have you know, decimal numbers, so 2.5, 2.4. Uh, in Racket, we'll probably call these inexacts. So an inexact is something that's not an integer. Um, and then we have exacts, which count as like one is an exact, but fractions are also exacts. So these are exacts. I can check that. I can prove it to you with these functions. Is, uh, is 10 over 3 exact? Yes, it is, right? Is one exact? It is. Is five a number? Number five? It is. Okay, we also have, of course, zero is a number, and there is a zero function. Uh, is there? Let's check. Zero question mark? Ah, there is. Good. Zero will return true. I guess more accurately, pound t. Characters in Racket, a little bit funky. Um, if you're used to C, then they're not the same at all. Uh, here they're expressed as pound, forward slash, and a letter. So I can prove it to you again. I can say pound, pound, forward slash, P, and it says true. Remember that function to check is char, question mark, not character, question mark. So something like pound slash a or pound slash b, pound slash c, nothing else is a character. So in c, characters are like, you know, uh, one element strings, but in racket it's completely different. Strings here, uh, ignore the unicode. Strings in racket are enclosed by double quotes. So, hello world something of that sort. These are the only things that count as strings. So just because something's a word, you know, this is a string. No, this is not a string. Anything uh, that does not have quotes around it is not a string. Um, another interesting thing is that if we just write a string and have it output itself, it'll print with these double quotes. So we know it's a string. If we put it in a list, which we'll get to in just a second, and then print that out, it'll still print with its quotes. So that's how we know that something's a string. Okay, symbols are indicated by a single, I guess it's an apostrophe, or a single quote, or whatever you want to call it. Let's call it a single quote. Single quote before the word. So something like symbol is a symbol, or apple, or variable. Um, an important point is that symbols can not have spaces in, spaces in them. So if I ask something like symbol A, this will work, it'll return true. Has something like symbol a uh, a farm that doesn't work because it interprets the second part as something completely different. Spaces separate different elements in Racket, so unless they are st in strings, which are enclosed by double quotes. So here we cannot have a symbol that has a space in it. Lists in Racket are also parenthesis enclosed, just like functions, but a little bit differently. Parentheses and, uh, I'll 
I'll just write enclosed by parens. Also start with a single quote, like symbols functions. So a full list would look something like single quote, open parenthesis, something inside, or maybe nothing inside, and then close parenthesis. Uh, an important list function is empty to check if there is anything in a list. So if I ask something like empty this empty list, then that will return true. Or, sorry, more accurately, pound t. If I ask empty one, Oops, that will return false. The elements within a list, this is my last note about lists, elements within a list are separated by spaces. So here's a list with a few elements, one, two, three, four, five. Those are five different elements in this list because they have spaces between them. If I remove one of those spaces, then this becomes 1, 2, 34, 5. Or 1, 234, 5. Three elements. Okay. Void and undefined, you'll most likely come into or run into when you are uh, when you're debugging or when you have errors. So anything you haven't defined and isn't a data type already already. So that's sort of broad, but if I do something like apple, this isn't parenthesis, uh, parenthesis enclosed, it's not a function, it's not double quote enclosed, it's not a string, it doesn't have a single quote before it, it's not a symbol, so it's nothing, it's undefined. Void, you'll most often run, to, run into when you have a condition and you don't meet any of the conditions which doesn't make too much sense right now. We probably haven't talked about conditions quite yet, but I'll just write when debugging and running into a void error, check your conditions. Okay. Now I want to just give you a basic if statement because these are so important in Racket. Uh, the syntax of an if statement goes if, it's a function, so it's parenthesis enclosed, Remember, the name of the function and its arguments are parenthesis enclosed. The first thing is going to be some sort of true or false question. True or false question. And that it returns either true or false. Then we're going to have what to do if true and what to do if false. Okay. So I'll give you an example of this, something like if equal, equal is just an operator that checks the equality of two different things in Racket. If equal one, one, I want you to output the symbol equal, and if not, I'll put the symbol unequal, unequal, not equal, okay? So let's run this if statement down in my REPL or the terminal, and we'll see what we get we get equal because these numbers are equal. Okay, great. I mean, what if they're not equal? What if we run the same command, but we run it with one and two? Then this part here, equal one, two, will return false. And then if will output its second, or I guess its third argument, not equal. Okay, I wanna put some of these things together. We're going to write, write a function called lawyer response that responds like a lawyer in a meeting or in a we'll say a settlement meeting who is desperate so in this case if the input or if uh, what the other lawyer says is a number we will respond that we accept the settlement. Settlement. If the input, what the other lawyer says, is not a number, or we'll say if it's if it is a string, we will respond 
that we just want a settlement, or, you know, a, a settlement number. Is that what's called? We just want a number. We just want their price. If it's if the input, which we'll say is what the other lawyer says, is anything else? Well, I don't know. I guess, I guess maybe they would respond with like a symbol or something. But in this case, we're just going to say, uh, "Huh? Return? Huh? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? Like we didn't understand what they said." Okay, so this should be pretty easy with a couple of if statements. Just remember, we're going to define our function name is lawyer response. It's going to take an input that we're going to call what other lawyer said. And then we're going to write our output following. Right, so define, here's our first argument, the name of our function and its argument, or its inputs in parentheses, and then the output of the function we're just about to write. But the output depends on what the input is, right? So I'll say something like if. So we first we want to check if it's a number, right? If the input is a number, if number question mark, what other lawyer said, then what do we say we're going to output? We will respond that we accept the settlement because, as previously stated, we are desperate. We'll respond with a string. We accept your settlement. Okay. Remember, we need we need another part, right? So this is what to do if it's true. What do we do if it's false? Well, if it's false, we still have to check if it's a string or not, right? So my false statement in my if, this what to do if false is going to be another if. I want you to check something else. This is a little bit poorly formatted. I can fix it really fast. I'll just put this over here. So here I'll write if string what other lawyer said. Then I'll respond something like, we just want to know how much this is going to cost. Right, so we just want their number. We responded that we're not interested in further discussions, we just want the number. Okay, then what's my What's my else for this if? What's my what to do if this is false? If it's not a number, and we go to this if, we check if it's a string and it's not a string, then we said we're going to just respond, huh, as if we don't understand what they're saying. So, huh, question mark, question mark, question mark. OK, we're going to go. We're going to check if I have properly closed my parentheses. Racket sort of does this for you, which is really helpful. If you click after a parenthesis, it'll show you where the, where the opening one was. So I need one more to close my define. Let's run this and see if it works. So if I run lawyer response, oh, it's a hyphen, not an underscore, on a number like 100, it'll respond, we accept your settlement, because it'll go to this first if, say if number, that returns true, we accept your settlement. What if I run lawyer response on a string, like we aren't so sure we want to settle or something silly like that. We just want to know how much this is going to cost is the response. What if I run it on something nonsensical like lawyer response on an empty list? That doesn't make any sense. It'll respond, huh? Okay. So that's a basic if statement and how to use them in your functions, how to use define, what functions are, what these different data types are. I hope this has given you some help in approaching the first problem set, homework zero and homework one and beyond. Um, as always, if you have questions, ask them on the Piazza, email the CS201 help email, or come into office hours. Thanks for watching this video walkthrough, and I hope to see you in the next one.